Welcome to the Rugby League uh, Weekly. I think it's number thirteen now. Uh, unlucky for some, maybe it's it's a, a lucky charm for us. I'm joined by Dave Parkinson and James Gordon. Dave's under the weather. Yeah, it was uh, really unlucky for me as well, to be honest. I'm glad I can make it up. But he's getting the branding in this week. Let's see how lucky Jan Let's let's let's. Let's see if Dave can. You've been having a call. We have, we have, for the we next have, we have supplied Dave with. I know, you've been, you've been having a call the last couple of times when I've not worn it. So I thought, well, I've seen as a, it was a late decision. I thought, right. <laughs> I'm still going to play some stuff. We'll have to get some stickers or something like that. Uh, what's coming up this episode? We're going to be talking. Uh, well, we're going to have a quick review of the, the Super League Round 8 and the Cham- uh, Challenge Cup action. Uh, a big win for Thatsby Crusaders as well. We're going to be talking. All the shenanigans going on at Wigan Warriors uh, at the moment, and we're going to be pre- previewing uh, this weekend's fixtures as well. So, just looking back at round 18 Super League, uh, Hull FC 12, Warrington 63, uh, James. Close match. You, you, you had the pleasure of covering this one. Four tries for Blake Austin. Uh, what a performance from him. No, definitely. I mean, what can you say? Um, some, good, some good tries scored, and. Um, I think I had said, was it, who did they play the week before? I think I said the week before that he's like quietly been getting on with business, hasn't he? Like he's been, he's not written all the headlines, obviously until last week, but he's been quietly getting on with his job, which was perhaps a contrast to Roberts last season. And, um, you know, he's obviously going to be pivotal if they're going to go all the way. I mean, for Hull, it was, it was funny because Hull had had this massive, Thing, oh, we need to get off to a good start. We're going to get off to a good start. You know, we know that's where. And then it was twenty odd nil after thirty minutes, something. And, um, it was interesting as well that Warren, how Warrington played, given that how they finished that Wakefield. I think it was, you know, quite reflective on on how strong Warrington are. That they've almost looked at that last 10, 15 minutes against Wakefield and then said, "That wasn't us. This is us." It was, a, it was a shocking performance from Hull, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, oh, there was loads and loads yeah. of tackles. I mean, I think there was um, Thompson uh, playing out in the centres, just proving why he shouldn't play out in the centres ever again. I think yeah. he was eight or nine missed tackles. Yeah, that nine, game, nine missed tackles, yeah. So, you know, I mean, he, he got done, done like a kipper, didn't he, on more than one occasion. As for Blake Austin, I mean, he was superb. And generally, I think that, that tells you where Warrington are up to. I think that... They did just blast yeah. all the way, didn't they? Uh, but I've, I've got to say, I, and I'm not trying to take anything away from the performance of Warrington, but I just thought all oh, oh, FC were, were absolutely diabolical in defence. But I know the, the Blake Austin dummies are fantastic and they're great to see, but when when the the whole players weren't even attempting to tackle them, I just thought that this isn't a Lee Radford sign at the minute. Who was worse though, Drew? Hull or Catalan? Well, Catalan suffered a 42-0 defeat at the hands of Wigan, who have been also out of sorts. Uh, I think the thing season. that got the thing that got me about that match was that uh, Hardacre's try was the one, wasn't it? Where he's literally picked up was it a loose ball, wasn't it? And like 40 meters out, and he's basically just <coughs> driven a bus yeah. down the middle of the defence. No one's even stuck their hand out for the bus. He beat about eight defenders, but didn't really have to. Nobody beat even. Went. I think he went between Sam Moore and someone else, and they just sort of like waved him through. And then Tompkins just sort of like did a pirouette yeah. around him or something. Didn't the, he? That, that, that was one of the worst Catalan's performances I've seen for some time. I, did, I didn't get to watch the entire eighty minutes of uh, the forty-six 0 defeat to Salford a couple of weeks ago, but that Catalan's performance uh, was shocking. A hat trick for Joe Burgess Law. Um, some saying he's, he's unfortunate not to be in that England elite performance squad what's been selected recently he's only in just my, got that though hasn't in he? my opinion for, for no point for no, <laughs> there's no point in the notes in that squad um, a, a fantastic performance from him his centre partnership as well with Oliver Gilbert very impressive that left side of Wigan including George Williams at half back is, is very impressive Dave. I mean to be fair it's the first time this season that we've seen Gildart come up I mean what, what he's come up with there is probably two excellent games in one aren't he? I mean, mm. if you run for over 300 metres you're doing something right aren't you either that or your opposition centre can't tackle and can't get anywhere who did Catalan play in right centre? Uh, Lange well Lange 
Because that, because Matt, Matt Whitley was his back row. Matt, Matt Whitley didn't have the. Because the best it, if you, if you compare the two games, that's where Salford ran over Catlan. Bibby was playing on that side, and they absolutely ran over Catlan on that side. So is that the side where where Catlan got? Big but wasn't from? wasn't Lanky in um, was Lanky in the halfbacks that particular? Yeah, well, that, well, that's what I mean. I think Whitley was definitely out there in that game. But what, obviously, clearly, they've got something wrong. With, whether it's the sliding defence or whether, whether it's the men on that side, they've clearly got an issue on that side. Uh, Louis Tini as well on the, on the wing against Joe Burgess. Is it? Joe Burgess just uh, made him look like a little lad, did he? Yeah, he did. He, he rose above him a couple of times, got the eyeballs. It was a it was a, a strong performance from Wigan. Adrian Lamb made the headlines after the game, saying Wigan's str- uh, back line, uh, back five, sorry, is the strongest in the competition. Uh, I think St. Helens and Warrington might have something to say about that. Maybe if they have days like that, they're the strongest. But well, yeah, how yeah. often are they going to have days like that? I know. And how often do they have them against the teams like your Warringtons and your St. Helens? That's the other question, isn't it? Well, and the other thing is, is what about six and seven? Does that imply that he doesn't think his six and seven are the best? Well, we know they're not. <laughs> George Dave, Williams. Dave says this. Well, jo- <laughs> hey, jo- George got on the score sheet again. He had a good game. Uh, Leeds Rhinos at 21, Casper Tigers 20. A very, very entertaining game. I love that game. Uh, at Headingley, a fantastic game. I'm uh, bitter Brad- about this. I'm, I'm bitter about this, and I'll tell you for why. Why are you bitter? Because. You're always bitter. I you should, tip, you should I, bring your own brand listen, of. Listen, I tip Leeds to win by two. That's why you're bitter. Then. Amid, no, amidst, amidst, <laughs> much, amidst much controversy and criticism in the office. And then they won by one. I was happy they, they'd won. But then I've since learned that in the media tipping league, that it's only the result after 80 minutes that counts. Why, have you never read the, re- have you never read the rules of that? Well, I that mean... came through in the first email, yeah, James. But, I mean, don't be, I mean, don't Le- be but, but, but listen, right, I predicted Leeds to win the game. Leeds have won the game. Robbed. Listen, it's, being robbed. It's the same as you're in any betting thing, isn't it? There's always some sort of rules. This is why, this is why they're all wealthy people. And we've got to thank our sponsors, Betfred, as well. This really, this is a good point to uh, to give the, the so site a plug. Make sure you check out the Have Your Say feature this week. Uh, a lot of fans have had the, the say on the Golden Point Rule. We've had two uh, now in Super League in 2019, and there's been over 300 votes <coughs> in our poll on the site. And uh, some agree with you, Dave. Most agree with you, Dave. 71% the last time I checked. Hang on, what have uh, I said? Say, say what, what, goal, what are they with a draw me? is a four. A oh, four right, is okay. I think the, the issue is, is obviously, if, if whoever, whoever wins the toss and decides to receive the ball is obviously at an advantage because they've got a chat. And that's what's happened in the two games. Is only one, the team who's won is the only team that's touched the ball. Now, how can you get around that? I saw a suggestion where someone said, um, just carry on playing. So instead of stopping at 80 minutes, just carry on playing. But then I suppose that's in favour of whoever ends up with the ball in 80 minutes. But then, well, isn't that just what it should be like anyway? You used to have set periods of extra time though, didn't you? Yeah, you know, so could you, do, could you do five minutes each Yeah, but then you, still like, you could still end up with a draw, so what's the well, point? Do, so we're making a bit more entertaining and uh, have a crossbar challenge from now well, well, I was thinking about this. I was thinking <laughs> about this. What, what, you spin round? what, what yeah. they could do, what they could do... Or, could or they get the wire fly out they could have a, and get everyone's equivalent. They, they could just get everyone <laughs> scrummed on the centre circle, like in the cent- around the centre spot, and then just chuck the ball up, and whoever gets it, gets the ball. <laughs> or they could do line outs from the side. What's wrong with line outs? Well, nothing, I'm just saying, is that a fairer way of doing it than whoever wins the toss just gets the ball and kicks a drop, though? Or should we all just go outside or, the ground and have a game of Kirby and whoever wins a game of Kirby gets or, two points? Well, at, at certain grounds, you could play Kirby in the ground. Listen, at, I think, terrace, I've been terrace. saying this from the start, so you're just finally coming around to my way of thinking. You said this would be great, this. I, no, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I mean, and we, the, we the, the other thing is golden people, try, isn't Thursday. it? But then, do you think with golden try that... <coughs> if they made it golden try, it'd become a bit sterile because teams would be really defensive against it. You know, Possibly. they wouldn't chance their arm in attack because they'd be scared. You know, like if it, if you're on the last tackle, you're not going to kick it through and chase it in case they get it and go through your way. But, but the thing is, it's it, it's it's much longer, isn't it, for a try to be scored? Uh, in effect, there's there's obviously two five minute periods for the golden point extra time. Uh, at the moment, but would I try and be scoring that 10 minutes? I, just, I mean, the thing for me is I've never left a game that's been a draw and thought, I'd like to have seen 10 minutes more of that. I don't think I have. None more so than any other match. No, and I but, think... Yeah, but it's about determining a winner, isn't it? It's not, about, it's not about seeing 10 minutes more of the game, it's about determining a winner. Well, yeah, you say that, but if it goes 10 minutes without anyone else, they're going to call it a draw anyway. So, 
I um, I mean, like, I, I just think we should still draws. To be fair, you've got draws in all the other <coughs> competitions. I mean, if Paul McShane, if Paul McShane had done what he should have done, we wouldn't have been having this conversation anyway because Casper should have won it in normal time. Ah, they might have missed it. Well, they might have missed it, but then they should. <laughs> but he had more of a chance than Dwyer did of his. And he's, what a, he's can, well can we just say though, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of bitterness. What a drop ball from Dwyer. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 can't, it, can't, it can't take Ferner out, didn't it? Yeah. It that, was that, a, that, was, that was great to see. It, it. That was a fantastic <laughs> bit of television. It was like a missile, wasn't it? He just kicked it and it just stayed at exactly yeah. the same level for like 40 metres. The thing yeah. is though, I mean, there's, there's been various um, sort of reworkings of that little piece of video, hasn't there? That I've seen since <laughs> they're all entertaining. I don't, I, don't th- I don't think we can quite repeat what Dave Ferner uh, said. Uh, it was something like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing with the ball? <laughs> oh no, he kicked it. I, yeah. I thought he said not booking Dwyer. Um, but we'll, 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 we'll move exactly. on. Exactly. I, I think he used to be a traffic warden, that's what it was. Ah, right, okay. He was just wondering where he parked. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to, to the game in the capital, London, Broncos 26, Huddersfield Giants 38. An important win this for, for Huddersfield because the, those two teams are, are most people's favourites to, to be down at the bottom two come the end of the season. Uh, an all important two two points for, for the Giants, Dave. Yeah, I thought good 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 result. Um, didn't see anything of this game, so I've got to admit I'm just going off what the result was, but I if you can get a win down in the capital, that's that, that's more than Wigan's done this year. Okay, well, uh, getting uh, <laughs> getting two tries as well for Huddersfield. I'm not I'm not going to bite today uh, today <laughs> because I don't want I don't. He's, he's still under the weather. I don't want his temperature to rise because uh, I'll worry about his welfare. <laughs> Top of which, yeah, I'm going to put that down for now. <laughs> He's um, in his elbows like that. He's lasting 10 minutes. <laughs> he's lasting 10 minutes with it. Um, so, yeah, an important win for, for the Giants. London gave it a good go at home. Um, moving on to St. Helens 36, OKR 24. Uh, I was at the Totally Wicked Stadium for this one. A uh, strange game uh, because it, it, OKR stayed in the arm wrestle, but I, always, I never thought Saints would lose the game, uh, even though... The Robins went in front on a couple of occasions. Um, Alex Walmsley didn't play, Matt Percival didn't play, James Robbie was missing, and Zeb Taylor uh, was missing from the starting lineup for Saints. All for different reasons, of course. Um, that raised a couple of eyebrows before the game. All KR fans thought Saints were disrespecting them uh, with some of the choices made, but Alex Walmsley had to, to rush out to the ground at 6 30. Just an hour and a half before kick off to uh, to attend the, the birth of his uh, second child. Uh, did you see any of the game, James? I see. I've seen bits. Hulk KR, Hull KR um, are a funny one because I don't think they've got going at all this yeah. season. But they they have picked up a few wins and then they've been in a few close-ish games or where they've you know they've they've given it a dig for sixty minutes and then maybe fallen away. Uh, and I and I keep seeing people sort of mention them as a. As a team that could go down, but I'm just not sure. I think I don't think they'll go down. No, I, I think I, they've got a bit too yeah, much firepower to be honest. I, I, I think I think we probably I think London obviously have pulled off them wins early doors, but I think I think I, I think that result against Huddersfield for them at the weekend is probably quite a telling one. I think what I do want to say is just regarding the strength of that um, St Helens squad. I mean, they've got a few players that are starting to push through now. Um, Aaron Smith, for example, getting a full eighty minutes under his belt. Um, again, he's a fantastic prospect and one that I think is just going to get better and better. And likes of Jack Ashworth as well. They've done the yards out at Lee in the championship. Um, they come back to St. Helens and they're really doing so. Mm. How some OKR okay fans can say that it's disrespecting them when they've beat them, that's something yeah, totally I think, different, isn't it? I mean, the other, I, think, I think there's quite a few teams that you look at now where they're only... They're quite strong, say one to thirteen or one to seventeen, but then beyond that, they've not really got much. Like Hull are a good example. Like if you put Hull's first team out, they probably do okay. But as soon as they're missing two or three, all of a sudden, and even uh, Leeds, to, to, Leeds have got to that point now as well, where yeah, Leeds to, only named eighteen man squad for this week, and you're thinking, well, what's going on? How on earth are you getting to that? Well, point? that's because of a search from Mr. Wellington Albert, <coughs> uh, the way to you for his. Uh, Registration to come through. You understand, James, that it has come through yeah, and it will yeah. play uh, on Thursday night. Um, just going back to Walker for a moment, the, 
To be fair, they have got a hell of a lot of injuries, uh, especially to the forward pack as well. So uh, I think I think it's I probably think right to some some slack. Kane Lynette, Lynette, um looks a sensational player for for Hull KR. Hull KR as well have also cut down the squad, haven't they? Because yeah. they had something like about thirty-five, you went for thirty-six quality, players, didn't, didn't yeah, they? Last yeah, you went for quality over I think quality. they're down about to about twenty-eight now, aren't they? Mm. Um, but even so, I mean, that should still be enough to get you through. Yeah. And I know they've given a couple of lads the debut, which is. It's always the way at Hull Kingston Rovers, yeah. isn't it? They always do tend to chuck a couple of kids in and they tend well, to make we were doing pressure. We were doing a feature on this yesterday, actually, where we were, well, looking, we're, trying at, to we were trying to <laughs> We were looking at players who were born in 2000 and onwards, and Hull Care have, th- have got three, I think, from this season who've, who were born in the 2000s who've made the debuts this year. Adam Rooks, Harry Barl, Barl um, Elliot, Elliot Wallace. Wallace, yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously that's doing something right, and you know, for for because Drew likes banging on about reserves and academy rugby, then they're obviously at the forefront of it. Aren't they? Well, the thing with Hull Care, Hull Care, I've, I've actually brought through some decent play. You know, you look at Taylor started off at Hull Care, and then Watt yeah. started off at Hull Care. You know, it's a shame for them that for whatever reason they've not been able to to keep hold of them longer term. But they've shown, uh, no, Shaw's sh- a barrel. Shaw's barrel that came through. Warrington. Warrington. Yeah. Oh, right. But okay. but. But the point still stands, you know, I think you've got to try and find that, that balance, haven't you, where if you've got players unavailable or whatever, that the players that you're bringing through are your academy players and that they are of sufficient quality. To be honest, I don't think anybody really cares where they come from. I mean, I know Whitney's banged on about it. Well, no, 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 I mean, it's a lot easier if you've got, it's a lot easier if you've got, it's a lot easier if you've got decent academy players that you can put in rather than just nothing do you know what i mean or players that have got potential to develop rather than just chucking in another body that's not really going to do it's good to have local lads inside much. as well isn't it oh you're flat capper it is it is try asking that to our toronto fans they don't care where they're from apparently in toronto no that's weirdly when right we're let's there. stop this talk <laughs> on toronto <laughs> Um, the final game that we haven't discussed yet, Wakefield Trinity 33, Salford Red Devils 22. Wakefield needed to win this one, didn't they, James? Well, I mean, everyone needs to win every game. But it's Ooh, that was a political answer. These are the type of games that they need to win, yeah, though, if they, I mean, if they want I mean, to get a place yeah, in if, top five. If you want to get top five, you've got to win most of your own games, haven't you? Mm. Especially if you think that you're probably going to be. I mean, they've already they already lost. They've lost the Saints and Warrington at home already, haven't they, Wakefield? So they've already lost the games that you probably expect them to lose. Um, but yeah, if Wakefield have got genuine ambitions to get in the top five, then yeah, they've got to be beating Salford at home. But then now they've lost Bill Tupu. Yeah. They've lost Johnston. All of a sudden, it goes back to this point we we're making before. If you take Johnston and Tupu out of Wakefield, have they got enough quality in reserve to? ensure that they can maintain the level. It'd be dead interesting to see how they deal with that because I think we've seen in previous years certain teams can adapt to it, like Castleford, for instance. When he even got injured, it, it made no difference, really, because the way they played, they were just able to slot somebody else in and the exact same outcome happened. Some teams not, aren't necessarily as... Wakefield, Wakefield put a lot on that, that left edge, don't they, between Johnson and Tupac? I like Wakefield, and I, like, and I think that the... They're un- an underrated side. Um, that's a massive result against Salford in my eyes. I think that they, they've obviously gone really, really well in that game. Um, I saw something though from a couple of my Salford followers saying that they were a bit disappointed at people getting on the backs of the Salford players. I mean, that's not really fair, is it? You know, the start that they've made. And- they, made they conceded an awful try, uh, Salford. Did. Was it? Um, the one where they lost the ball, they lost the ball ten meters out or something, and it was bobbling around, and then someone from Wakefield picked it up, and it was an awful. It, it just looked like it was one of them tries that you'd be tearing paint off the wall at half time if you conceded it. But but yeah, I mean, I think so. I think I said this at the start. Salford obviously started well, and they were up, they were up at the top of the league weren't they, after a couple of games. But they only played, they've not played anyone at that point, and I think people got a little bit carried away with Salford. I'm not saying Salford aren't a good team because they are, but I think. There needs to be maybe a bit of a reset in expectations at Salford. Ultimately, if they can if they can finish even in the top eight, that's a pretty that'd be a, a good achievement for Salford. I don't expect them to be yeah. pushing for top five. I think there's a number You've of got signs. To consider the budgets as well, I think there's a number of signs though that are very very similar. You know, so Wakefield, Salford, Hull, Hull KR, they're all very much 
much of a muchness, aren't they, with what they've got it, in the squads? It'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see where we're at in maybe five or six weeks' time, because obviously you'd expect Wigan and Leeds maybe will find their level because they've they've been underperforming. And it'll be interesting to see how that looks, because obviously we're expecting Saints and Warrington to to pull off, pull away from everyone else, aren't we? It'd be interesting to see. Well, mm. can Casford keep up the heat, or are they going to get sucked into this group of pretty much everyone else? Isn't it going to be? You would imagine. There's not. What I'm trying to say there doesn't seem to be a tier apart from Saints and Warrington. At this moment in time, there's not really Everyone's a tier. Everyone, yeah, there's not really a tier. Whereas you might have previously expected maybe, you know, like we had it in the most recent years. You you almost had the top seven and the bottom five, didn't you? In previous mm. years, whereas there doesn't seem to be that. You've got the top two, but then there's not really any differentiation between the others at the moment. So it'd be interesting to see how that pans out. It's in the been next a, a pretty good start for Super League this season. It's been much more competitive, hasn't it? Uh, at least I think so. We'll just run through the, the Challenge Cup results. We won't talk about it, we'll just run through the results. Uh, Barrow Ra- Raiders 16, York City Knights 32, Batley Bulldogs 62, Lock Lane 6, Dewsbury Rams 32, West Hull 6, Featherstone Lions 6, Doncaster 46, Fe- Featherstone Rovers 38, Swinton Lions 14, Hunslet 24, Halifax 28, uh, Keithley Cougars 12, <coughs> Bradford Bulls 14, Oldham 14, Witness Vikings 54, uh, Sheffield Eagles 12, Lease Insurance 34, Thatterweath Crusaders coming up with the results of the round uh, 16 points to 14 against League One side uh, North Wales Crusaders, Whitehaven 21, Rochdale Hornets 22, Workington Town 21, Newcastle Thunder 20. Just a little bit of a shout out to Thatterweath Crusaders, Deb. You're big on your amateur rugby. Uh, a fantastic result for them, and it's good for the competition, the Challenge Cup, isn't it? Uh, well, I think I think uh, amateur sides getting as far as they can in the Challenge Cup is always great, great for it. Thatterweath have been a, a superb team for a number of years. They've got three open age men's teams. They've got a women's team as well. They've got all the way through, you know, from sort of under sevens to right, right the way through. Mm. They are such a strong, strong team. They are. An example for everyone to follow in a lot of respects. I like a lot of the stuff that they do. The coach Richard Owen there is doing a fantastic job. Um, I think he's got one of the, the top amateur jobs in England being there. Mm. Um, they've got some players there that have some experience of the professional game. Lads like Bobby Goulding, lads like Lewis Foster. Louis Foster was sensational oh, against North Wales. I he tell was you what, unbelievable. He, he should still be playing yeah. semi pro somewhere. He, he was the best player on the park. Player. He is an excellent player. But they've got other lads who can step up as well. I mean, Andy Lee, the big prop forward, had a, a great game. They've got the likes of Prendergast there, who's a, another good player. Um, and yeah, you can go through the team and you can literally look at other teams in like League One and think, you know what? He'd do a brilliant job. Mm. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's really well played. They were always in control of that game as well. I know it got a little bit fraught towards the end, and I think they conceded a try with about a minute to go, which if you kicked the goal would have levelled it all and sent it all into extra time. But no, I think, I think we got the, the right result there. Yeah, and uh, you, you was a, a witness, uh, Oldham, yeah. James, a very, very dominant performance uh, from Kieran Purtle's side, wasn't it? Yeah, I think thirty eight nil at that time. I think Witness probably could have. It, I think they got out to forty eight nil at one point as well. Um, and to be fair, Oldham did give it a dig second half and and got a couple of a uh, couple of tries of their own um, playing up the hill as well. Um, yeah, I thought I thought Oldham I thought Oldham were a lot more organised than Rochdale. Um, having seen Witness beat Rochdale the week before. Um, but yeah, you know, it was just one of them. You know, Witness were obviously comfortably better, but they were. They were scoring some good tries, and uh, I'd imagine Pert was probably disappointed with the last maybe half an hour, mm. uh, and you know, but ultimately, with you know, once you're thirty eight and forty eight and up, you can do what you want, can't you really? Yeah, uh, that's the results um, done. Also, Oldham prop uh, Ben Davis suffered a a terrible looking injury in in the witness game. Uh, he suffered a very very bloody mouth. If you want to see the pictures. And over to loverubbyleague.com. We'll get another uh, shameless plug in there. The final loser podcast isn't here this week. Dave's let us down as, as usual. No, well, I'm only <laughs> sure. <laughs> as usual. Um, but yeah, it'll be, it, it will be back um, next week. 
everything on loverubbly.com, check out Off The Record, Perp Talk, there's been a few transfer moves, a few loan moves uh, this week, Keith Lecougar signing Taylor Prell, who used to be at Warrington, um, Casper Tiger signing Daniel Smith as well from Huddersfield Giants, Dave, you're about to say something? Yeah, well I was actually just going to go just very, very quickly back to the Challenge Cup, because I think with the, the Rochdale result over at White Team mm. deserves a little bit of credit, because they were 21 points to 12 down with like three, three minutes, minutes left, left. Yeah. and yeah. they scored like the two late tries, and one of them was scored by Dan Abra, yeah. who I remember as a little lad running around with his dad at Lee. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was <laughs> that's actually, made me old. It was, it was actually out White Team, wasn't it? Last it was, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got a couple of comments coming through as well on Facebook. Daniel Murphy says it's been impressive for one game. I think that was heading back to the um, back Wigan back line. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Banks, is it Lewis all the way? We have this conversation every single <laughs> week. Is it the elite England elite squad? I've got to get together for Sports England funding. That's all. It means nothing. Yeah, I put that in me. I suppose in so. Yeah. Last week. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, that's what, that, that's what it is. But just an out to Great Britain squad. Come on. Let's stop making ourselves look amateur. Uh, ben Weatherall. Is it making ourselves look amateur though? What? Announcing a, a, a national squad for, a, for when's our next fixture? Well, I don't know, but you know. Is it, is it making it look amateur though? Imagine, imagine, England, imagine England, should, England, I England think football should, why squad. Why couldn't they play France? Like, why, if, they were gonna, if England have got no games, why couldn't they just add England France mid season or something? Yeah. Because, and, and I've seen, so, I, I, seen, I think Aaron, Aaron Bauer said, I think he said, Obviously, they've got to name it because obviously it's about the 2021 World yeah. Cup, which is fair enough. But then, if naming a squad's important, surely playing games is important, just to say. I yeah. think I think what is important though is actually getting the squad together and making it like. Yeah, you can do that, but do you have to announce it to do that? Do you know? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? What, what what's wrong with announcing it though? Are we not just picking it for picking? I think, no, I, think, I, 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 I mean, I, I think no. I think the issue is the issue is isn't the squad? It isn't announced it. The issue is there's not enough games. Yeah, that's the issue. I, do, I, do, I just think depends if you speak to Jimmy Peacock or he'd be telling you there's more. And, 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 and I understand the, the the reasonings of of the have to do it for sporting for the sporting club funding as a build up to the twenty twenty one World Cup. But I just think there was no point in announcing it. You can get together. That's fine. You can have unofficial meetings if you if you like to call it that, uh, where it's not not announced. Um, uh, th- this isn't a dig at any players whatsoever as well. They they all deserve the recognition. Fantastic for Josh Charlie and Jack Hughes, for example. For we getting that call, Robbie Mullern as well. I just think announcing a, t- a national squad when we've literally we no idea when they, they play the next game is is barbaric. They might not play until the twenty twenty. Barbaric. That's, barbaric. That's, barbaric. Taking, barbaric. It, that's taking it a bit too far, isn't it? Barbaric. barbaric. I like I like me describing words, Dave, but uh, <laughs> uh, we'll move on. We'll have to get, we'll, we'll have to get Drew it, for a thesaurus. It, he's been exemplary today, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll 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 talk about the ongoing in rugby league uh, this week. I think we've got got to start at Wigan, haven't we? Uh, Gabe Hamlin being provisionally uh, suspended I, for an anti doping violation. A, I did a really good tweet this week, Dave. Did you? What? Just the one? Just one. Yeah, yeah. I only do one. I only do one good one a week. Right, okay. But he does four thousand a day. Anyway, what's your point? Go on. I said. You need to shut your head. I could, you've done what I've been trying to do my, for weeks, trying to shut him up. My tweet was, Wigan can't be far off a full house in bid, bad PR bingo because they've had salary cap breach mm-hmm. with a point deduction, which obviously is subsequently being overturned. I forgot the others. They've obviously started, <laughs> really, they've started really poor to the season. They've yeah. had Edwards, the whole club legend, does U-turn shenanigans. The fact that Lennigan doesn't sign contracts, apparently. They've had... Mullen got done for drink driving, didn't they, the other week? And then obviously now they've had this, this drugs ban. I and mean, he had, you want... he had Hardacre as well. In well, yeah, season. obviously he had Hardacre in the off-season. Somebody tweeted me saying he had the Tompkins brothers bar spat, whatever you want to call it, last year as oh, well. Hashtag rectum of Wigan. Yeah. So, yeah, not great, for, not great for Wigan, but I think not great for rugby league in general either because... Ultimately, we're gonna one year elite, are supposedly one year elite clubs. Well, it just seems that. I say, I just can I can I just come out and be honest with it? Gabe Hamlin, you're a pillock. What an idiot! He's got it all, and then he's just gone and coughed it up and tossed it away like he don't mean anything. I mean, you you know yourself, you know you bang on enough about Wigan Drew to know that there's enough people and enough mm. guys involved in that Wigan 
team, youth teams that want to get there, they want to play, they want to pull the shirt off. He's the guy that's got it, and he's just gone and chucked it away. Well, maybe I mean, if he had coughed it up, he wouldn't have got tested. But, but you know, it's, it, I, I just I don't understand it. I don't get the why you would put your, I think, your, your job at risk. I think particularly way. with Hamlin because it's taken him quite a while to get this point, hasn't it? And the fact that he's come over from Australia in the first place that you know. Yeah, as it, it's only a young. Uh, a young kid, really. It's no excuse. No, no, it's no, it's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not using that as an excuse, but I'm just saying it. It, 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 it kind of did all the hard work in in actually having the guts and the, and and the courage to come over here when he was 21 uh, ahead of last season. Not not having made a first team NRL appearance uh, down under to to, to come to a club <coughs> like winning that took took a lot think... of guts. So he did all the hard work. He moved over here and it. He settled over here, so he, he did actually all the hard work, and then he started to break into the side. He became a fan's favourite at Wigan because when he weren't playing, a lot of a lot of uh, Wigan fans were saying, "Where's Allen? Get him in the team! Get him in the team!" And then when he's broken the team, and now I hope this isn't symptomatic though of this the fact that he's, he's deeper at Wigan. I hope that it doesn't go any deeper. I, I, it's just I, I a few think, individuals. I think there's like a, I, I think generally there's a problem with belief. Dave, I think. I think there is. I think there's a problem with rugby league. Well, I mean, maybe, it, maybe it, not. Maybe, it, maybe society. Like, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, because uh, yeah, obviously we get in. We have regular instances of this, and, and obviously, I mean, I, you know, obviously we hear things there, and you know, I heard of some players from a club that had been spotted in a in a nightclub doing things that they maybe shouldn't have been doing recently, and it's like, well, obviously the only on, players are only tested. I would imagine each individual player maybe doesn't. Maybe only gets tested on average once a year, if that. You know. Uh, well, I would uh, also, I would also say as well. Okay, you've got Randy Chase coming back into the game. He's he's doing these these ways by the amateur ranks. Amateur players don't get tested in the same way as the pros. Do. In fact, I don't think they do get tested. They don't. Well, at no. all. well, that, well, that's what I mean. I mean, like so we, we could be we up were, to. Well, we were what t- I was up to before. Well, that's what. Years. Well, this is the thing. It's like you look at a player, and we don't know the exact details of Hamlin at the moment, do we? So we don't know whether it was performance enhancing or not. But in theory, he could have played 20 games under performance enhancing before he got tested, in theory. Because that's how the system works. But, but I mean, like, you know what you can and can't take as a sports person. And you're encouraged to go and talk, talk through with, like, club doctors and stuff like this. So, oh, oh, I mean, well, there's well, no excuses. Got play, and, and I think people... Well, well, when the director of rugby, Chris Walensky, has come out and said that, look, the, the players are... Thoroughly educated. Yeah, and I think that's a fair role. point from Wigan's point of view. Is everyone's going on about all oh, this culture at Wigan, whatever? But I, I think that's unfair because ultimately the players have got to take responsibility for themselves. Like Wigan can only do so much; they can't babysit them twenty four hours a day. And I, and I have no doubt that Wigan, between whatever hours of the day that they're responsible for them players, they, they do the best by them. You know, it's like if you, you know, it's like if 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 Drew went out on a Friday night and started, you know. Snorting stuff off of his nose, or whatever. Is that my fault? Is that my problem? Do you know what I mean? Because he works within my environment, uh, you know. And, and that's, I think that's where, that's where players have got to start taking responsibility a little bit for themselves and and thinking about. Because I mean, all we hear about all the time is, oh, players don't get paid enough and player welfare and all this. But and, if they're going snorting stuff up the nose or whatever, well, that's then, what I mean. I, does that mean they're getting paid too much then? Well, I mean, and and that's the thing. And I mean, you look at you look at obviously everyone bangs on about. Players getting paid, well, the players get paid a pretty decent amount for what they do. It depends on the level, though. Depend- no, at, 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 at super well. league level. But what I mean is the revenue in the game's not really going up. But yeah, players are still trying to command more money. And it's like, well, you know, where's where's that? Where'd you find that balance? I think I think there's a couple of couple of things there. But yeah, the only thing at the moment I think, Drew, I'd make it worse is if they went out into the car park and all they found was the, the, the sign which said there are no... There are no parties in this vehicle overnight, and the vehicle have been nicked. <laughs> That's the only thing that I bet things worse at Wigan at the minute. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's it's not a good situation for the club at all, is it? And, and the the old oh, Edward saga rumbling on over the they club. Need bury, just, they need to bury. They need to bury it. Making it loose because it's so, so be drastic. <laughs> Edwards. Because the thing the thing is now is if even if Edwards comes, which you know we don't anticipate he will, but even mm. if he comes, it's going to be all. As soon as he loses a few games, it's going to be because. He's already the only reason he's basically going to come now is if he don't get a better offer, and you know that's not going to go down well with with Wigan and you know they've they've obviously got, they've got a serious rebuilding job to do. Cause don't forget they've been losing players hand over fist last few years. They lost Bateman, Sutton, Tonkins last year. Williams is going to be off. Lula is getting on a bit. Powell's not really. 
you know, we can't carry the camp for everything. They've got to recruit. They've probably got to recruit three, four, five serious players. And it's like, how can you do that when you don't know who your coach is? And, and, the, and the, the, the tampering deadline comes up, obviously, at the end of this month, where you can speak to players out of contract for next season. They've got to get it sorted quick. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Mike Malloy has commented, St. Helens fan, of course, uh, always watches Top Fan, it says. I don't know what Top Fan means. But I think Top Fan must... means that you, you, you interact with us. Like if 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 someone interacts with the page on Facebook regularly, you become a top fan. Oh, to, thank you. I was good very much, Mike. I was going to start calling him Ace. He's like <laughs> Top Gun, where they're all Ace. And... Uh, so so Mike's basically said, I, I live down down south the, these days, and uh, we're gonna like Man United, where uh, whereby <laughs> people who don't live local to a club support the most popular club. Uh, so a lot of people support. We're gonna who I speak to, if we're gonna then the beacon of our sport outside the north. Uh, then the issues you mention on the tweet need ironing out if the sport uh, is to have a good <coughs> around the country. I, 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 well, that's why. I, that's because the thing is, if we, it's like Leeds as well. If we're getting Leeds are in crisis, we believe Leeds got a massive problem because they're arguably the two biggest and strongest clubs. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I agree with you, and I agree with Mike. Uh, Max Leaf, Max Leaf Fox, Fox. Uh, who do you think? Hang, hang on, you're not you're not trying to read one of these. Are you? You've got to get done in a minute. Like Dave Woods was on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, who do you think? Uh, what do you think Leeds' next move for? Who do you think Leeds that need to move for next? A forward. We have a very thin squad. Um, I, sorry, Dave. I'm surprised they chopped Malali. I think they need another middle. I think they need another I'm one. surprised they chopped Malali. I think as well. the, the problem is, is, I can see that Fern is obviously wanting to rebuild it, isn't it? But they're almost like they've got rid of quite a few players, but they haven't really, you know, Garbutt went, you know, as well. Quite a few players have gone out the exit door, but they've not really brought in enough. I, I, have they, are they expecting Mustafa and Ledsky and players like that to step up a bit more? This is why I say I think they need another middle forward who's probably in about his mid 20s. What's, what's happened with Cuthbertson as well? Is he injured? He's no, Cuthbertson's back in the squad this, this so, week. So, he's been injured a lot, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, yeah. he has struggled. Which is he's, he's really sad, because on his day, I mean, he's oh, one yeah. of the top forwards in Super I think, I mean, Leeds have, got, Leeds have got a few problems, haven't they? I think Lola here is obviously not doing it at the moment, and they need to figure that out a little bit. Um, They've actually whatever. looked a little bit better with Sutcliffe in the halves, haven't they? Yeah. You know, Pat, I know, I, I've sort of like... <coughs> That's um, probably the best position, isn't it? Bit. We had this discussion Yeah, I like Sutcliffe week. at six, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think the halves is probably the best position. Uh, yeah, because Miley gets a lot of flat, but I think Miley's a decent... Miley's a decent super at that. But as, as we've, we've talked before on this but show, is he, is there's he a couple good of runners, isn't there? It might be, it might be a decent scrum out for Super League, but is he you know, for Leeds? I think I think you know, I think there's this question marks about Parcel. Why has Parcel gone from being basically best up in Super League to being well, one of the best looks to being marginalised? Is Dwyer, you know, with all I know we won the game last week, but is Dwyer anywhere near the level of McShay, Roby, See, Clark? This is I, I rate Dwyer. I rate Dwyer yeah. as well. I have to admit. I, I, I I I've, like I've always I've always liked Dwyer. Well, clearly, I, I, think I mean, clearly, Dave, I like Dwyer. clearly, clearly, Dave Ferner agrees with um, me because he he's he's, but, he's putting his face. Like right, you say, it'd be interesting to see what happens with Matt Parcell off contract at the end of the season. Um, I, I think clearly there's obviously some sort of rebuilding job going on at Leeds, and I seen a really interesting uh, tweet, and I forget who who it was um, who tweeted it. Who basically said that. Leeds have obviously got in the hole because they just didn't succession plan for mm. when Sinfield, Peacock, whatever went. They just sort of... And then they had another lapse they, a couple of years later yeah, they, Maguire and Barola. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 didn't, they didn't do the succession planning with it. So, well, I think they did, but those players may no, have they, they no, stepped they, up, haven't well, they? Well, I, I would argue against that, Dave, because I think, yeah, they had players like Sutcliffe coming through, but I think they just, rather than it being a succession plan, I think they were just hoping that these young guys would be able to step up. But they and must have thought that those guys could have done a job for them at that time. I think in the team around the players that they had, they could. But as soon as, you know, and, and the proof's in the pudding, isn't it? As soon as these players have now dropped off, leads have gone down. And I think... Uh, I, was, I mean, this is exactly what the conversations that Wigan should be having as well, isn't it? With the likes of or Lachlan and Lou Malai coming to I remember the who, I remember who said it now. It was a St. Helens fan because St. Helens obviously had a similar sort of thing when like Long and mm -hmm. uh, Skullthorpe and stuff dropped off. And St. Helens are getting it really right at the moment because obviously they're integrating, you know, like Richardson, you know, whatever you think of Richardson this season, 
he he's basically there now where he sort of took over from Matty Smith. I know they only had Matty Smith briefly. But then, you know, if you've got you've got Thompson and Ashworth and all them players coming through or establishing themselves, that's that's setting them up for the next few years, yeah. isn't it? You know, they had the outside backs you've got making yeah. since there, Regan Grace has sort of sort of come through and it's taken him a little bit to get into that into that role. But I think that's what I think that was the point that was being made that Saints have got to the point where <coughs> even if somebody drops out, they've still got the quality there. And obviously you you do need to make the big signs like Saints have this year yeah. with Coot and Nike Armour. Well Leeds have more, haven't they? You can Leeds have, Leeds but what have I mean is they've, they've they've made the big signs but they've not got the rest you of it add, there. You can argue with Leeds that Leeds is a massive rebuild job. You know, because Huge. I mean if you if <laughs> if you take either side of the pinnacles of success that they've had in this sort of four or five year period, then they've been garbage, haven't they, in between? Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm sure like you got Gary Schofield somewhere else pulling his ear out. And I think that's where I think that's where all also they've almost like papered over the cracks a little bit because obviously they, they got the, the extra Super League titles when they still had Maguire and Burrow. I think to be fair, you do though, don't you? I mean, they're still trying. They're, they're almost trying to fit round pegs in square holes, aren't they? Mm. Leeds. And well, Sutcliffe's your best example, isn't it? Because obviously then he came through and everyone was like, "Oh, he can be." I enjoy the next, You know, Sutcliffe can be the next Kevin Simpson. Well, yeah, of course, Jordan Lilly's just dropped off the dropped off the radar, hasn't he? He's yeah. out of at Bradford this season. Well, the, what's interesting is there's quite a few what I would describe as fringe players that were at Leeds that aren't at Leeds anymore that actually they might have been better served trying to keep for the success. You know, McShane's a good example. Chris Clarkson's another example. I'm not saying that... I think, did I'm, they not get fed up because they were so far behind the in order at that time? Well, potentially, but then but surely... Got a, got but then surely, happy, but then surely from Leeds' point of view, they should have been saying to them players, look, lads, you know... We know you want to play more now, but these players are going to be dropping off in the future. And I think that's the problem is they probably cut... You know, Liam Hood, we were talking about Liam Hood in the office before. He's another good example of a player that potentially... I'm not saying that he could be part of a top, top Super League team, but he could have been a player that played regular minutes during this transitional period that Leeds are facing at But again, you, you, you then, the, the other thing you've got is that if players aren't going to get that selection, they can get better moves elsewhere. They're going to go, aren't they? So you can't stockpile everybody. Wigan's found that to, to, to the... But I always, feel, I, always, before, I always feel like you've got a better chance of doing that with players that you've brought through yourself. But still, you can't hold a player back and you can't say, you know, oh, don't worry, you'll get 12 games next season. Don't worry. Don't worry, lad. It but, doesn't but, work, does but, it? But when they go in RL, you can, you can have a gentleman's agreement and a handshake saying they'll return in three years' time. Are we back on Wigan's uh, gentleman's <laughs> agreement again? Yeah. Uh, Mm. Quite a few gentlemen's agreements, isn't there? Um, Mike also says Leeds won the treble a few years ago and had a nightmare uh, season the following year uh, with some of the old guards still playing. Uh, I'm not sure it's all as you describe. Mm. Um, I think I, Leeds had a lot of problems all that season, didn't they, after they won the treble? Uh, the, was it the training base got completely flooded and they had to faff around and get they, everywhere else they were around about year. three different places weren't yeah. they I think that year uh, I, 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 that's not an excuse for them having a poor season but they, they do have an effect don't they but I think they're a, I think they're a funny team Leeds aren't they because you, 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 there is that element where you get the feeling that they, they, they tried to um, temper it they tried temporary fixes haven't they they're like my best DIY efforts yeah they, so put, some pla- temp- they put some plasters on haven't they're, they, they're, all, they're all temporary fixes and nothing's built yeah, yeah. Um, Michelle Bell says I've seen a lot of players injured this year uh, do you think it could be down to the boots and the grounds that they are playing on uh, I've never heard of all these players being so hurt we, see this, we say this every year is this, is this because we start in winter uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think and we're I don't think so because of the, the studs and the, and the blades but it's, it, it, I find it interesting because obviously we, we cover all the 19 man squads when they release them we do the previews um, Warrington and Saints over the last two years, have I had any injuries? Well, I was looking at Saints, i used 20 players this season. Yeah. And I'm, the, on, the, the only used about 23 players until like round 20, yeah, 20 yeah. something last season. Uh, so they, they, those two clubs have hardly had any injuries. Um, but Are they spending you, more of the salary cap on the physio staff? But, 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 but they, then you look at the, the likes of uh, the both hall clubs. Um, mm. We're gonna have had the their injury issues over the last couple of years. Now. Wakefield are suffering, so it's 
it's interesting to it probably be interesting to see how the clubs are operated behind the scenes and do they do heavy training in the week when the season's on or do they do light training it'll be interesting because training will have a factor won't it I think there's a case there for because you do look at it and basically anybody who's not in the top four seems to suffer loads of injuries I think that's yeah. like we were saying before if, if, if Hull Castleford are in a rut as well yeah, if, if, Ca- say if, Cas- if Casper Hull and Wakefield don't have any injuries they could probably be in that yeah, top four class out there, yeah. so yeah. You know, but then as soon as they have a couple, I guess what what I'm what I'm getting at is are the players that are around the Super League as durable as the ones who are playing for the top four clubs? <coughs> are those at the top? Is it because is it, they're the top? That the top. Can you look at it scientifically, or is it just a case of a bit of bad luck? Well, I also I also I think as well because it, I, Warrington and say it's very very rarely have injuries. I want to chuck something else in here because um, okay, we've been playing with this sort of 10 metre rule since about 1992 and I just wonder whether the time has come because we're different from Austin oh no sorry we can't change can we because Robert Elston wants us to become NRL too uh, but my idea would be sort of moving the defences closer together so rather so you get five metres you've, wa- you've been watching too much rugby in and you Dave well I think, you know, I think, I think <laughs> well, to be fair I think, and rugby union are doing a bit of this at the moment aren't they they're trying to reduce the collision aren't they because they feel that that has an impact on player welfare well there's so been, there's been union, some deaths actually yeah so season, rugby union are trying to reduce the impact of the collision and I do think that rugby league has got to a point and, it, and it's made steps with the interchanges and changing that last year Rugby League, it got to a point where you basically have 13 machines running at 13 machines. Every player was stacked, you know, built virtually the same. And, and I think that has caused problems because ultimately it's easy for these... Like these they're so powerful running at each other that something's going to break somewhere. There's also the participation element because I think the way Rugby League's gone now is it's not... It's only for people of a certain body type or of a certain nature. At the very elite level. <coughs> yeah, sorry, at the elite level. Whereas yeah. if you compare to rugby union, you've still got. There's a position for me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you've still got the short, fat bloke who can play at prop. You've still got, you know, the, the bean pole lad can still play on the wing or at fullback. Whereas I don't feel like you can have that necessarily in, in rugby league anymore because of the way it's set up. And I think that suggestion about maybe reducing from 10 to 5, you know, potentially could. Could change. Well, it's we don't need two reps then either. It's so strange, come... isn't it? How the how, how the size has changed in rugby league? Because if you if you look maybe to the nineties or even early two thousands, and you had the likes of Jason Robinson, who was so short on the wing, and if you put him up against Daniel Tupu, for example, who plays for the Sydney Roosters, now six foot five, who who's probably one hundred and ten kilos. It, it's it's quite it's quite mad and quite strange. And Corey Oates is another one, the Brisbane winger. Who's a, who could, could easily be a battle over in Super League? Yeah, um, and I think I think and that's like to Joe Burgess. I, 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 I think I think that's I think that's what's happened, and I think it is a it is a slight issue. I think in in terms of rugby league, it will be interesting to see whether they do do anything about this welfare thing. But it depends if enough is enough research being done to prove that the injuries are a result of X, Y, or Z. I'd love to find out more about the scientifics behind it. Actually, mm. you know, and it, it is it is it is an interesting one to have. You know, and. Um, Maybe that's something that we need to do to question the physio departments of clubs. Has anybody ever done that? Uh, we've got another comment in on, in on Facebook. Uh, James Messenger says, Hull's hacking Malouda, including the Toronto squad for this weekend's game against Sheffield. Have they gone into Geo Red? Have they gone into Geo Red? Or have they so, into well, it's, it's, it's not been announced, or unless it's been announced while we've been on Earth. Because they've got um, a couple of uh, Hull players there, haven't they? Jack Logan's there. Yeah. Brad Fash. Jack Logan, Brad Fash, and now Haki Maloudi. Well, Haki Maloudi is always one of those guys that sadly seems to struggle whenever he's in Super League. He's far, far too good for League One because yeah. his point scoring and his general performances over at Doncaster suggest that he's much better than that level. But he doesn't seem to be able to. Why step up to Super League regularly at this moment in time? What, what's his best position? Because he's played half back, he's played, played full back last played week. Full back. Back. I'd play him on the wing because he's so erratic, you don't know what you're going to get from him. So I, I'd stick him out on the wing. But this comes have back Toronto, to the size what, issues. What, what's like? happening with Toronto though? I mean, have they not got enough players? I mean, what's going on? Maybe sure. he's not. Well, he, he seems to be wanting to move all the players that he's had on the roster on, hasn't he? Because you know they've got. Well, it's not Brian McDermott's squad, is it? Well, you know, yet. old Bri- yet. you know Bri- still... Riley's there, O'Brien's there. 
You know, they've got Mella, they've got Macron. Well, if you're looking at wingers, so, they've got Adam Higson, they've got Liam Is Kay, Rawson still there? So they've got, got Rawson's gone on loan to York, to York yeah. for a month. The amount of players that Toronto will go for is unbelievable. Mm. So, Maloudi's gone over to, to Toronto then? Yeah. To Manchester Day. Interesting. Well, they're going to oh, London this funny. weekend. Uh. Um, I do apologise. So yeah, th- that's all for the so comments bitter. for now. We'll just uh, just have a quick uh, quick round of predictions for for this weekend's games. Then uh, we'll start with the Thursday televised fixture between Hull KR and Leeds Rhinos. I'm going Leeds on this one at Hull KR. Oh, it's at Hull KR. Yeah, I'll go Leeds as well. Actually, I'll go KR. Friday night sees Casper Tigers take on Wigan Warriors. I'm going Wigan on this because have you seen that? Have you seen the changes? Castleford without four key players. Joe Green will back for Wigan as well. Well, I don't think Joe Green will make that much of a difference, does he? I think he's, 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 been, he's been an important forward for, for Wigan this year. Mm-hmm. Got, a good, got a good strike. Go on, are you going with him? Uh, no, no, I'm going to go with Wigan actually. So. I'll go Cass. You're going Cass. Wigan have got a terrible record actually. Cass over, over recent season. I'm only doing that because uh, Machine's not playing. Yeah. He's a massive miss, isn't it? And uh, Junior Moores isn't playing. Uh, Chris Clarkson's not playing. Um, well, he's been in and out anyway, hasn't he, Clarkson? Yeah, well, one more isn't playing as well. I can't, I can't quite remember who. Uh, Wakefield Trinity at home to Huddersfield Giants. Another another big game there for, for both teams. I'm Wakefield. Going, I'm going Wakefield home advantage. I'll copy these two. I'll go Wakefield. Uh, Warrington at home to London. No disrespect to the Broncos, but I think... I all know who uh, are tipping this Broncos! <laughs> Blake Austin, I'll go for. Oh, what are these? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Warrington. Uh, interesting story in this one, though. Matt Davis uh, joined Warrington from London in the off season, has recently spent a month on loan at London in Super League, played for London last week in the loss to Huddersfield. Being named in the Warrington team this week to play against London. He's a good player, Matt Davis. Could make his debut. Yeah, yeah he's a good player, Matt Davis. <laughs> Made over 50 tackles last week. I wonder whether. 50 appearances at London as well. I, <laughs> I wonder whether Davis would have signed for Warrington if London had been in Super League. Because obviously he signed for Warrington, didn't he, on pre contract before London got promoted. And you do wonder sometimes whether. I, I have thought that if he was. If he, knew, else as well, if he knew London, London were going to be in Super League, would he have stayed? Nah, I don't know, but um, that's like the opposite of what we were talking about before, the winter, about you know other players saying, right, I'm going to move on. Yeah. So. But Matty Fozard dropped on, didn't he? He, he signed uh, from good, Sheffield Eagles before, great, before London even came up into Super League. He's a great that. player, though, is Matty yeah. Fozard. A really, really good player, very underrated yeah. Um, oh, Saturday, Catalans Dragons at home to Saint Helens. Are Catalans going to going to bounce back, or are Saints going to make it? Uh, I'll go Saints. Win on the board. I think this will be close. But I know, I know you don't think so. I don't uh, know if you think so. But I think it'll Saints be close. will slay the Dragons. Very good. And I'll go Catalans to get rid of the Saints on this one. No, the Saints always march on, Dave. Uh, on to Sunday. They march in, don't they? <laughs> so Why are you marching then? No, they're not. <laughs> Salford Red Devils hosting uh, Hull FC. Salford. Salford. Uh, no. Oh. I'll go with Hull. Oh, I'll switch my mat off, Chairs. Yeah, go on. I'll go with Hull. Blink, you know, you're like a Tory politician. Um, let's I'll go with Salford. Let's, let's not even get into Brexit, David. <laughs> It's on everyone's hey, telly all hey, the time it, anyway. There's, there's, there's enough wrong with rugby league. We don't need going about Brexit <laughs> as well in this, do we? Yeah. <laughs> fact, well, yeah. yeah. Um, very true. So, are you going, Dave? I'll go Salford. Uh, the Championship action, Toronto against Sheffield at the New River Stadium in London on Saturday. I think James will be watching this one on the telly. Uh, who are you predicting? I, I, I've got to go with Toronto. Toronto, oh, yeah. You know what? I'll go Sheffield. <laughs> go on, Dave. I'll go. I'll go Sheffield because um, they've got a dual partnership, haven't they? Going with mm. uh, Broncos, so mm. I wonder if he'll be made available to them. Okay. Uh, to lose Olympic at home to Featherstone Rovers. Up the Olympic, I think. To lose, so. yeah. To lose. Uh, there's also League One action on Saturday. London Scholars against Workington Town. That's of course part of the double header. Double header at, uh, at London. Uh, working to, I think just 
Yeah, I'll go Workington. Uh, West Wales Raiders at home to Keith Lee Cougars, who had a very, very good result. Well, not a good result, but a very, very good, good performance. performance. Is it after the Lord Bradford Mayor show week? for Keith Lee? I mean, West Wales still trying to get the first win, aren't they? Hey, they won the first half last week. Oh, well. You sound like Dennis Betts' agent. It's all about energy. <laughs> it it's all about energy. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with the Cougars. Can't bet against Yeah, them. I'm going to go with Keith yeah, Lee as well. Uh, finally, on to Sunday, championship championship action again. Batley Bulldogs against the Witness Vikings. You know what? I keep backing Batley. It's not when he said, oh, but the Vikings. But the Vikings. We don't see Anthony Gellin's post. Oh, is he back? He's back now. Well, the Vikings, has he decided he's got to play? Is he actually going to play a full part in this game rather than doing some stupid stuff from getting carried away? This has got you triggered, this, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was that? It's, it's a stress ball. Oh, I can do with the stress ball. Um, um, you know what? I'll go Batley. You're going Batley? Yeah. Who are you going? Witness. Uh, Bradford Bulls against Dewsbury Rams on the Ever League app, of course, uh, at Odsall. Hey, are Bradford Bulls the TV toppers on that? That's going to be the third time they've been on that. Yeah, how many times have Leeds Rhinos been on telly as well this season? Yorkshire bias. Who, what, what was Bradford, Bradford oh, Dewsbury, come on, Dave. <laughs> uh, Bradford oh, against Dewsbury. Oof. I'll go with Bradford. Leeds Centurions against the Barrow Raiders Lee. at the Leeds Sports Village. I'll go with Lee. I'll go Lee. No Danny Richardson this week though for Lee. We didn't tell him last week either, but still won. Uh, Rochdale Hornets <laughs> against Halifax at the Crown Oil Arena. Halifax. Halifax just, I think that's going to be close. I'll go with people, that, I'll go with Halifax. Um, Rochdale just seem like a team of halfbacks and hookers at the moment. Uh, York City Knights against Swinton Lions at Bootham Crescent. York. I'll go with York. York by about 20. Yeah. And uh, le- three League One games, Doncaster v Coventry. Doncaster. Doncaster for me. Let's go Coventry on that one. Newcastle against Oldham at Newcastle. You know what? I'm going for a Dennis Betts inspired Oldham victory. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but he's not the coach though, Dave, is he? Well, that's why I've Newcastle gone. are. That's still why I've gone for Oldham. Oldham got victory. a lot of injuries, so Newcastle are going. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go with Newcastle. Uh, and then finally, Whitehaven against Hunslet. That'll be a cracker of a game, that'll be. Whitehaven. I'll go Whitehaven as well. Oldham advantage. Mm. Well, there, there are our predictions. Well, no, uh, I'll, no, I'll go no, with Whitehaven as well. No amateur picks this week, lads. <laughs> no amateur picks Sorry, at all. No. Oh. We've overrun there. Disappointed. We've, we've, hey, we've been on it, haven't we, Dave? James has put us under strict instructions. Disappointed. To, well, to have it done. Dave's got to have Dave's his got an amateur picks. I'm going to have a shout out then for my team, Lee East. Lee East at home to Eastmore Dragons, Division 3. Hoping to back up their victory that was achieved up in Ensingham last weekend. Love a bit of Cumbrian action, mate. So that's it for from the Anton Deck of the Rugby League World, or the Dick and Dom, uh, as we like to call them. Dick and um, <laughs> been this, this has been David James. Uh, we'll see you on number 14 of Love Rugby League Weekly uh, next week.